Hi everybody, it's Brandon. Today I'm reviewing the Decium's The Ordinary, the Natural Moisturizing Factors Plus HA. It's marketed as a surface hydration formula. It's basically just a moisturizer that you apply to your face and your neck. I actually have it on my face right now. I took a shower maybe 45 minutes ago and just applied it to a wet, damp face as soon as I got out of the shower to just sort of occlude and seal in that, wa that water, that moisture on my skin to prevent the, the inevitable transepidermal water loss that occurs whenever you don't apply moisturizer. Now this video was not sponsored by Decium. It was not sponsored by the company at all. This is a unbiased, honest review of my own experience using the moisturizer for over a year. So I first heard about this brand maybe a year ago when I came to visit New York. I needed a moisturizer because I didn't have one on me. I went into the Decium store in either Manhattan or Brooklyn and I picked up the 100 milliliter. I think there's also a 30 milliliter, both of which are safe for, are TSA friendly. You can pack both in uh, carry-on bags on the plane. So I've been using this moisturizer for about a year now. So I, I think it's safe to say that I can uh, give a, a thoughtful review and a, a, a fair review for you if you're considering buying it. So it's pretty cost efficient. I think the 100 milliliter bottle was only around like $8 or something when I bought it in the store and I think it, it still is a year later. Uh, it might be the same on the website. I'll link it down below. But they don't put a lot of money into their packaging. You can see that the packaging is fairly sleek and straightforward, which I really like. And for the number of high quality ingredients that are in the moisturizer, especially natural or naturally derived ingredients which primarily makes up the moisturizer it's definitely a good buy from a cost standpoint now before I just tell you what I thought of the or what I think of the moisturizer and how it makes personally my skin feel based upon my skin type everyone's is different obviously so everyone's gonna react differently I thought we would just do a rundown of the best ingredients within this moisturizer and just sort of see you know where the research lies if, if it has any utility at all for the the skin, for improving the skin barrier or anti-aging, smoothing out the skin. Now, of course, the first ingredient is water. Most moisturizers are primarily water, 60 to 70 to 80 percent water. That's obviously the moisturizer part. There are three other main constituents of moisturizers, and that's occlusive agents, which when you put on the skin helps to seal in water and moisture. It helps to sort of trap it in your skin and prevent it from evaporating out. There are also emollients, which are like skin oil oils like coconut oil or rosehip seed oil. Uh, there's also like non-oil emollients which are in this product as well that really just help to soften the skin. It doesn't really provide a lot of moisture but it's just another component of a moisturizer. And you also have humectant. I'm not really going in the best order here but humectants are basically things like glycerin and hyaluronic acid and those help to bind water, hold water in the skin, attract water to the skin. And you need all of these three constituents to, you know, you need the humectant to bind to water, you need the inclusive agent to trap that water and prevent it from evaporating into the environment. And you also need the, the emollients are also great for just softening and smoothing the skin. So yeah, like I said, the first ingredient is aqua water. And then we also have caprylic and capric triglycerides. This is basically just a fatty acid that behaves similar to an emollient. So something similar to as rosehip oil or jojoba oil, those skin oils that you use to, to, to soften your skin. It behaves like that. Caprylic and capric triglycerides also work as an antioxidant. I can't really speak to the stability of that antioxidant, but it, it behaves and works as antioxidant. It also provides a slight occlusive layer on the skin as well to help prevent the trans epidermal water loss and just retain moisture into the skin. And this ingredient, as well as pretty much all of the ingredients within this moisturizer are all natural in the sense that they're all derived from natural sources. So something like caprylic triglycerides are derived usually from a combination of glycerin, a humectant, and coconut oil. So it, it's found in nature basically, but it's been isolated and just put into this moisturizer. Now the other ingredient that it has in here, or the other two ingredients it has in here are acetyl alcohol and uh, I think sterile alcohol. Many people are very fearful of alcohols when it comes to skincare because alcohols generally are drying. They don't provide a lot of moisture. They're in some products for people with really oily skin to help just sort of dry out the skin, especially people who have acne prone skin. So a lot of people try to avoid alcohols in their skincare altogether, especially if they're trying to increase the moisture in, in their skin. But the thing about acetyl alcohol and sterile alcohol, which are both in this product, these are the only alcohols in this product, they're both fatty alcohols. So they aren't typically drying for anyone. They actually act as an emollient. They're derived from natural fats and oils. They have 
16 carbons in them, I think, r roughly 16 carbons in them. So they're a different structure than just your, than, than different alcohols that are actually more drying. And yeah, they also, they act as emollients. So they are in a sense hydrating. So you don't have to worry about these. These are actually incredibly powerful moisturizing ingredients that you definitely would want in a moisturizer. There's also glycerin. There's two main humectants in here. Humectants are the ingredients that bind to water, attract moisture and water from the environment into your skin. Glycerin and, and uh, hyaluronic acid. Glycerin is one of the, I think probably the most natural, naturally occurring humectant. It's a really good plant-based humectant. So it helps to hold on a ton of water on the skin, helps to attract water into the skin. The moisturizer also has sodium hyaluronate and sodium hyaluronate is a sodium salt of hyaluronic acid. And hyaluronic acid is similar, it behaves similar to glycerin. And it's also a natural compound that's found within the body. In the skin layer, it actually holds up to approximately 1,000 times its own weight in water so it's incredibly powerful in the sense of from a moisturizing standpoint but it's also just a good facial rejuvenating agent that helps to plump up the skin hydrate the skin it's a really good ingredient to have again it's naturally derived and it's you know combined with glycerin it really just takes the moisturizing factor of the of the of the moisturizer up several notches in my opinion okay so it also has several amino acids in here i'll just read down i'll just go down the list it has arginine aspartic acid glycine alanine serine valine isoleucine proline threonine histidine and phenylalanine now topical application of amino acids based upon the the current literature we have right now is actually helpful for the skin in, in the terms of our collagen. So the application, so polypeptides and oligopeptides are peptide chains or protein chains combined, uh, consisting of or comprising several different amino acid residues and smaller amino acid residues respectively. And these peptides uh, can actually, or may, they're theorized that they may sort of imitate the the structure of collagen, but topical application may, keyword may, actually, I mean, there there is some literature out there suggesting that topical application of these amino acids or just the, the, the polypeptides in general that, mim that imitate collagen may stimulate collagen synthesis as well as uh, dermal metabolism, which is important because, you know, collagen production, dermal metabolism reduces over time. So having options that may theoretically or actually literally increase the production of collagen and that cell metabolism within the skin makes sense. And it's definitely something that you would want in your arsenal, especially in terms of anti-aging. Okay, urea, that's also another popular ingredient that's in here. Urea is an endogenous metabolite and it's known to enhance stratum corneum, uh, hydration and also just improve overall skin barrier function. So it helps to just sort of maintain, help you maintain the integrity of your skin barrier to protect it from the outside world as well as to protect it just from the 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 evaporation of, of moisture from your skin. There's also some naturally occurring amino, uh, uh, not amino acids, fatty acids that are, that are included in the moisturizer that also not only provide an emollient effect, so they smooth and soften the skin, they also have antioxidant effects of varying degrees. And again, it's, I'm still unsure, I can't speak to the, the thought of the topical application of antioxidants and how that's gonna protect your skin, but the emollient factors of these fatty acids is definitely what we're looking for because it is a moisturizer. So it has things like linoleic acid, oleic acid, I think pal palmitic acid, as well as stearic acid. And there's also triolene, which is a triglyceride derived from uh, glycerol. And that's another just emollient and skin conditioning agent. There's also tocopherol, which is a fat soluble vitamin, basically vitamin E or with vitamin E activity. Vitamin E is a really powerful antioxidant. And again, with the antioxidants, it also has uh, citric acid, which is another antioxidant. Can't speak for the, the durability of those antioxidants when applied to the skin, but it could be used as a natural preservative. And in regard to vitamin E, there are very few well-controlled, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled studies that demonstrate the benefit or the utility of topical application in regard to dermatologic disorders or, or skin conditions. So again, I can't speak on any of this and, and none of this that I'm that I'm telling you is it should be replacement for a doctor's advice at all. I'll have all of the references down below in the description box for you to just sort of check out on your own.
own for your own education. So again, I've been using this for a year and I really, really love it. It's slightly on the thick side, but this doesn't really provide like a whole lot of shine. You can see I put this on maybe like 45 minutes ago. What I do when I use this moisturizer is as soon as I get out of the shower, I put it to a damp face to just sort of, I think I mentioned that earlier in the video, to just sort of trap in the moisture into my skin. And so when it comes out of the bottle, again, it's, it's slightly thick, but when you rub it in, it rubs in very nicely and it disappears within the matter of seconds and it dries down relatively quickly within 30 seconds to about a minute. So you don't have to worry about looking wet or slippery or anything like that. It dries down but you, it's not very tacky at all either, but your skin is left very soft, very smooth. Again, it's extremely cost-effective in the, in the sense that it is low price. Again, this one, this 100 milliliter bottle, it lasts me for m maybe a couple of months and it, it was only $8. So I say just try it. You have nothing to lose. It has incredible moisturizing factors in here as the label advertises. Again, it's very inexpensive. So I suggest, you know, even just getting the 30 milliliter bottle is going to be, you know, it, it, would, it would probably be just, I guess, prudent to just go ahead and try and just see, again, see if you like it. So I definitely highly recommend it for at least people of my skin type. I can only speak about my skin type because this is my own experience. I'm not extremely prone to breakouts and I don't really have problematic skin, which I'm very thankful for. But yeah, I use this every single night. Typically, I have just a whole swath, a whole armamentarium of, of moisturizers in my uh, in my cabinet. But I use this for the most part and I really love it. So I, I highly recommend it. Okay, so I've been talking for a long time. Um, I hope this review has been helpful. And if you liked it, please hit the like button down below. You can also stick around for more skincare videos as well as other videos of days in my life by hitting the subscribe button down below and becoming a subscriber. Just join in and let me know your thoughts actually in the comment section. Let me know if you've used this moisturizer, how it's made your skin feel. I I really like to know, especially if you have different skin than mine, if you also reacted favorably to the moisturizer. I think that will also help other people who are watching this review who may kind of be on the fence about buying it. And don't forget to hit that bell icon near the subscribe button to just make sure that you're notified of future videos. And I will see you next time. Bye.